deep seek coder is the coding model that almost nobody has been talking about this is a new programming specific or programming fundamentally a programming model that can become your AI coding assistant and this model comes in variety of sizes we recently covered it on our AI news summary very briefly but this video is going to go deeper into this model and how did they actually build this model some focus on the training data and also some live demo of couple of examples that I tried let's get started with this model this model is called deep seek coder it's uh, it's from a company or an organization called deep seek AI and if you see this model this model is actually a series of coding models that has been trained from scratch on uh, 2 trillion tokens and if you see the composition of this model this model has got a composition of 87 percent of code and 13 percent of natural language with both english and chinese and we'll see the split later on this video and this is a very simple benchmark that you would see that this model actually pretty good on a lot of different languages and even in the AI news video, this is something that I mentioned that a lot of these models are typically focused on Python or mostly popular languages. But if you see this model, this focuses on like a lot of different languages, starting from Python, JavaScript, Bash, C Sharp, TypeScript, PHP, Java, CPP. And you can see that this model is almost the best across all these languages when you compare it with Code Geeks, uh, Llama, Code Llama, Star Coder and code llama 34 billion parameter so this is the 33 billion parameter line so you can see this model is like the 33 billion parameter is probably the best version of this and again you can see like it is good at a lot of different tasks within these programming languages so this model also has got a 16,000 context window and it also comes with the fill in the blank task now, before we see further about this model, I would like to quickly show you an example what I checked with this model and I found it to be good. First of all, I went to the chart here and I said, write a simple Gradio application to read the two new inputs from the user and also uh, result the added one. So I basically said, like, take two inputs and in a terrible way, you can see like when you read this, you would know that, you know, what the crap it is, right? I gave it in a terrible way saying that read two inputs, take the input, add it, and then give it back to me, the sum of it. And this model did exactly the same. It says, here is an example of a Gradio application that takes two inputs from the user and returns the sum of the two inputs. Import Gradio as GR, specify a function, one, and then the function, it takes two arguments, num1, num2. Num1 plus num2 is what it returns, and it uses the interface class of gradients, gradient. Grade, gradio gradient sorry it uses the interface cl class of gradio and uh, function is equal to add numbers and input is number and number and output is number i'm uh, one thing i'm not very sure if, if gradio has something called number i know the text box is there but even then it is actually impressive and you can see that it explains you what it has got it explains why it uses launch and it explains that you need to have a Python environment where Gradio is installed and then it will open a web page where you can actually add the two numbers. An impressive result, that is why I decided to make this video. Now, if you see the details of this model in itself, this model, like we said, like it has got 16,000 context window, extra fill in the blank task and all these things. Now, if you see this model, how the model has been built, uh, that is one of the most interesting aspects here. So the procedure of data creation and model training, first step, they collected the code data from GitHub and applied the same filtering rules as star coder data. Star coder as a model that has come from the big code, the research wing of hugging face, and they've used the same filtering rules that they used on star coder data. After the data has been collected from GitHub and after the data has been filtered, parsing the dependencies of files within the same repository to rearrange the file positions based on their dependencies. So they go into a repository and then make sure they arrange the files in the right order so that the dependencies are in the right order based on the dependencies. That is what we call as dependency parsing. Once they have done that, concatenate the dependent files to form a single example and employ a repo level min hash do for deep duplication. So deduplication is a very important aspect anytime you build a pre-training data set. So it is important to keep only the, the unique elements so that you know you're not unnecessarily wasting time in uh, 
in in doing the training and also you know you are not going to overfit the model at a particularly duplicate or more duplicated item so deduplication is very important so if they have used a min hash algorithm to do the deduplication and uh, it's a repo level deduplication for a given repo they have done the deduplication and uh, finally they have done some quality uh, like uh, filtering so this is a screening further filtering on low quality code such as code syntaxes with errors or poor readability so these are like the five step process of data crawling rule filtering dependency parsing repo level deduplication and finally quality screening is what they have done as a workflow for the data set preparation and the model training now after that the model training process starts the initially the pre trained with data set consisting of 87% of code 10% of code related language based on github markdown and stack exchange and 3% of non code related chinese language this is quite surprising for me like why did they make the choice to have a 3% of non code related chinese language i don't know if it is to have the model later on have a separate instruction for chinese language that that particular part is not very clear to me if you have any clue or guesses let me know in the comment section so they've got 87% of code 10% of english with code related items so it is from github uh, markdown when you have read me that is markdown stack exchange that is again where people discuss about the code but 3% non code related chinese language models are pre trained using 1.8 trillion tokens with a 4k window size so the first step they have a 4k window size on 18 1.8 trillion tokens The second step is further pre-training, or what we call as continued pre-training, using an extended 16,000 window size on an additional 200 billion tokens, resulting in the foundation model, what we call as Deep Sea Coder Base. And further, this model has been fine-tuned, or instruction fine-tuned on 2 billion tokens on instruction data, resulting in an instruction fine-tuned model, which is called as Deep Sea Coder. instruct so the instruction model has 16000 context window it has been trained on an additional 2 billion tokens on top of the long context pre training which was fine tuned which was continued pre training on top of the base pre trained model which was trained on 1.8 trillion tokens with a 4k context window how do you use the model it's very simple uh, you, you just basically install all these things um, especially transformers and accelerate and you get to use the model i'm going to show you a quick demo of how do you run this model on google collab we are going to use the 1.3 billion parameter model but the model seems to be pretty impressive if you want to use the model within their uh, interface you have to click this chat with the deep sea coder and you have to add your phone number and password and then sign in i was kind of not very comfortable with that that's why i did the demo on uh, hugging faces spaces so it's up to you like if you want to do that enter your phone number or email address and do it if you're not comfortable you don't have to do it you can run this model on google collab or on the hugging faces demo now coming to the um, the most impressive part about this model one is the benchmark but then there are certain aspects about how these models are doing uh, really good on other benchmarks so one is the human evil which is only python specific one and then the multilingual aspect the second one is mbpp which is like a python specific benchmark and then the third one is ds1000 which is a data science related coding now when you see this model on all these different aspects what you would immediately notice that of all the open source model this is one of the best across all these benchmarks so you have uh, you have the codex model you have the star coder model you have the code geeks model you have code llama 7 billion 13 billion 34 billion and the best one is the deep coder base 33 billion parameter model which has got 56.1% on python human evil which has got 50.3% on the multilingual human evil on mbpp which is a python specific benchmark it has scored 66% beating like the previous code llama 34 billion parameter which was 55% and on ds1000 which is a data science specific question or the benchmark it has scored 40% beating the previous 34% even the 1.3 billion base you would see like it's not as bad as you would see in um, you know the other 1.3 billion parameter models the star coder 16 billion parameter model scored uh, 28.7% on multilingual human evil and the 1.3 billion parameter model scored 28.3 so it's almost on par with the 16 billion parameter star coder model so it's a, it's a very impressive 1.3 billion parameter model to be really honest and when you up your size like 57 5.7 6.7 
it it is like way above the existing 16 billion star coder model and almost closer to the code llama 13 billion parameter model not only that these models have uh, been better than other existing models uh, especially the coding specific models that this model also does better than the grok one which is a recent model that is announced by elon musk from xai grok one 33 billion parameter model scored 63.2 accuracy on human evil while deep sea coder has scored 79.3 on math, Grok won 33 billion, scored 23.9, while Mr. 13, Mistral has scored 13.1, and Deep Seek Coder 33 billion parameter model has scored 35.3. You would see this model doing pretty good, like much above this GPT 3.5 turbo. This is all the benchmarks, but again, like benchmarks are not something that we take it to face value. If you want like more evaluation detail, you can go here and then see separately like how it did on every evaluation detail. The only thing that uh, was not super clear for me at least on the, the repository part is the code that is specified here is MIT license, but the model licensing uses uh, like their own licensing called deep seek license agreement. I spent a lot of time like Dan exploring this model. I spent a lot of time reading this license agreement because I wanted to be sure. I did not find anything specific to commercial. The only thing that they are saying is that you can use this model completely. You can use this model completely as much as you want, except these items that are mentioned in attachment A. So the restriction comes only for the attachment A, whether it is direct use of the model or the uh, derivative use of the model or a fine tuned use of the model. So it basically says in any way, it should not violate any national or international law. You should not use it for a military exploit, exploiting, harming, attempting exploit, harm minors, and uh, you know, don't disseminate disinformation. You have like a list of items. So according to this license, I'm not a legal expert, but according to what I read on this model license, which they call us deep seek license agreement you should not use this model for any of these things everything else is basically fine and uh, that's what i understand which means you can use it for commercial purposes as well and uh, and the model has a bunch of use cases the use cases are like one you can use it for code completion you can basically give write a quick sort algorithm and it will fill the rest of the part for you the second one is code insertion that is what we said like if you have used GitHub Copilot on Visual Studio Code, you can write the first part and the second part, ask GitHub Copilot to fill in it. People typically re define the function name, add a doc string, and then ask the AI model to add into it. So that is something that you can do with this code insertion. You can have a chat model inference, so you can have multiple conversation with that. And uh, this this follows the, the typical chat template that we have been see seeing recently. So it can do that as well for you. So you can add a question, um, initial prompt, ask a question, then ask a question again. So that is possible with this. And you also have a repository level code completion. So you can just go here and then, uh, and then give the like, a repository level code and ask it to complete. So for example, it knows this is utils.py file. It knows this is models.model.py file and it knows that this is main.py file and it knows that now you, it has to complete the main.py file because this is like a repository level code completion and all the details are here for you. Now what I'm going to do you do is I'm going to show you a couple of more demos and uh, the deep coder models are available. Deep C coder models are available on Hugging Faces model hub, starting from the 1.3 billion instruct model. You have got like up to 33 billion instruct models. So I've got all these instruct models and also the base model, the 33 billion base model and the 1.3 billion base model available for you to use it right now. So what we are going to do now is I'm going to show you a quick demo. So I went ahead and asked, write a simple Python hangman game. And you already saw this, the other demo we saw the gradient demo. So write a simple Python hangman game, make sure the code is such that I can copy and paste it on my terminal Python and run it. <laughs> it's a, once again, it's a terrible prompt, but it has created a code. The code looks fine. Um, in the first glance, but I wanted to copy this, I wanted to open my terminal. And once my terminal is open, I'm going to paste this. I'm going to run this. And uh, once I, oh, that, my bad, that's my bad. Uh, I didn't initialize Python. So I should initialize Python, run this, guess a letter, let's say J, wrong, P, okay. The ending is P, what could it be? C, I can see the source code, it's simple. Okay, it's supposed to be C sharp. I wouldn't have ever guessed it. 
S H A R. Okay, congratulations. I won the game. So this code completely worked fine without any disturbances. That's good. So the next one that I try to understand is help me with a Python code that reads all the PDF files in the input folder and extract the tables from those and save them as CSV files. Imagine you have a folder, read all the PDF, extract all the tables, give me the CSV output. And it uses tabula. I was thinking whether it will use tabula or camelot, but it uses tabula. So that's good. So input folder, output folder, get all the PDF files. And again, it uses the os.listener, which is good. Loop over each PDF file, commenting is good and construct all these things. And then finally save this as a CSV file, like for every um, input PDF, it is going to save the PDF as CSV file, which is again good. I was thinking whether it is going to concatenate whatever it is going to do. And it also says that please make sure you have installed tabula pi. And uh, as you notice one thing, so tabula is imported as tabula, but while installing, you have to install as tabula pi, which is something that it does a good job in explaining that tabula pi is a simple Python wrapper of a tabula Java. So I'm happy that, you know, it gives me all the details upfront very clearly. It says like you need Java and all these things because like, many, many years ago, I had like interns where I gave them the exact same task where I had to go explicitly fix their errors when Java was not available. So I'm very happy that this, this programming language, programming model, deep seek coder is actually giving me all the instructions upfront so that I know that I need Java. This is a wrapper tabula pi is what I should install, not tabula and how I can run all these things. So very happy with the performance. Now is the section when we are going to run this entire thing on Google Colab. Very simple, nothing fancy. I've got a GPU here. So if you use this notebook that I link it in the YouTube description, you can directly click and run it. Otherwise, if you're starting from scratch, you need to have a GPU in place, pip install transformers and accelerate. And after you install it from transformers, import auto tokenizers, auto model for causal LM. All you need to do is specify the model in this case, because I'm doing it on Google Colab. I'm using the 1.3 billion instruct model. You could try to fit the 6 billion parameter model up to you and um, this is not a sharded model so maybe the 6 billion parameter may not fit it might crash your system ram just check it out yourself 1.3 billion instruct model tokenizer first you're downloading then you're downloading the model make sure you enable the trust underscore remote underscore code is equal to true because this is not like the core um, model within the transformers library then move the model to CUDA because we have GPU and specify the messages so uh, the role user and content because this follows a chat template you need to specify the the role right so this is role in this case the user is sending that content is right quick sort algorithm in python and then you use the chat template and translate this message into the chat template message and keep the input ready so if you want to see you can actually okay because uh, here we have translated it let me get it for you this one will show you actually how the the chat template and and anyways i have written the tensor so the pytorch tensor so this is how the chat template is applied and the the tensors are returned and that has been moved to the cpu gpu sorry in this case cuda and that is the input and now you use the input to generate the model the end of token the end of token is this id so that is something that you have to specify here the end of sequence token eos token id here is 32021 but everything else is the parameter uh, hyper parameter or uh, arguments that we are familiar with the number of new tokens remember that this has got a token window of 16000 context windows so which means you can also give like a lot of uh, input inside that is why you are able to actually give the repo level input inside so you can see you you are able to give a repo level input inside because it has got that much context window once you have the model dot generate generating the output now decode the output and print it. So what is the question? Write a quick sort algorithm in Python and you can see the output and uh, you have the quick sort. Let's go ahead and ask the same question that we asked here, which is this one and uh, see if it generates the same output because this model is a 33 billion chat model and this one is a 1.3. I'm going to give the same one. I don't need this. Run this, run this, and now run this. And this is a chat model. That means you can also have a chat option. So you can have a conversation with that and you can see it, it has started generating and it has successfully generated num1, num2, written num1 plus num2, the gradio interface and gradio launch. And it says 
it in fact gives me the detail when you open the browser navigate to localhost um i don't think this is the default port anyways uh, that's okay but anyways open the localhost and you will have this gradio interface where you can run this thing quite impressed with this model the model in fact is really good the licensing is on a little confusing side but again i think like they wanted to be clear that nobody uses this for any misuse but other than that deep seek coder is a series of code language models starting from 1 billion parameter until 33 billion parameter with a mix of coding english and a little bit of chinese which i don't know why it exists there maybe for instruction fine tuning and it does a pretty good job across all the benchmarks at least the one that they evaluated across multiple languages and um, it's one of the best coding models that is available today let me know in the comment section what do you feel about this model if you happen to try out this model see you in another video happy prom